Today we are heading up to the Wapta ice field in Banff National Park and uh, we're gonna ski a mountain uh, called Mount Rhonda. It's one of the easiest peaks up here but we've already skied uh, Mount Olive and Mount Gordon which are also both fairly easy but Rhonda is even easier and depending on time might take a look at tagging Huber as well. Mount Huber just to the north of Mount Rhonda. It's pretty chilly down here this morning. It's minus seven but it's going to be warming up considerably throughout the day. We've got clear skies. Freezing level hitting 2500 today which is pretty high. The rating the avalanche danger is considerable 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 and that is uh, at peak uh, temperatures essentially so in the morning it's probably low 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 seems like there's a good overnight freeze we had a little bit of snow 10 centimeters earlier uh, in the week and then some winds as you can see on the lake here most of the snow has been swept away by the winds but make do should be an excellent day skiing with Andrew and Heather up ahead Today, to Mount Rhonda and back is around 20, uh, around 25 kilometers. So, pretty decent day. Not a ton of elevation, but should be pretty beautiful up there. We're in the colon of the beast here, canyon. Not a terribly safe place to be, but it's early. The GoPro picked the skin track up, but we cut across down there. And then there's a couple right down there. Came up from there. And uh, Bow Hut is actually just over this roll here. We'll see you in a minute. Uh, I think it's taken us uh, not quite two hours to get here. So uh, it's pretty decent time, I would say. And it's, yeah, snow is really softening up, so. That'll make for some pretty decent skiing, hopefully. All right, we made it to uh, Bow Hut. Jolly old St. Nick behind us. Crowfoot Mountain, somewhere up there. The hut, pretty much closed this winter. Unless you want to book the entire hut. It doesn't make much sense to me. But uh, yeah, we kind of head up this head wall and then across. Coming up to the glacier here, there's uh, two dudes heading up, it's uh, really the toe of the Wapta ice fields. Once you're at the top you can kind of see everything, but at the toe of this glacier is an uh, ice cave. I'm not sure if it's been dug out, but we'll check it out. This is uh, the ice cave. Oh. dark in here. Well, you guys won't be able to see <laughs> too much unless uh, Andrew puts his headlamp on. Oh, I've got my glasses on. That's fine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Big chunk of ice ready to crush you. I don't remember being able to go this far last time. Oh, look at the crystals on there. That's cool. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh. All right, let's get out of here. Well, thanks to whoever shoveled this out for. Coming at you live from wherever we are. <laughs> <laughs> We're on the Wapta ice fields here. We got clear sight of Rhonda, uh, Haber to the right of it. Um, forget the one there. And then far back is Baker and Thompson over there. That's uh, Crowfoot Mountain and jolly old St. Nick. But uh, yeah, it's pretty clear sailing. It's uh, cooler up here for sure. So uh, that's kind of nice we're not baking. It's clear sailing. There's a group of two ahead of us on uh, Rondo, but 
No, we're making good time. We'll get up there and uh, ski down and decide whether or not to go for Haber or, or what. So, yep. Getting close to the ridge here and uh, it's pretty easy skin from there. You can see uh, the president's vice president right over there if I'm pointing in the right direction. Mount Gordon, Mount Olive, St. Nick. Beauty. <laughs> it's Andrew's celebration. So uh, yeah, we pretty much topped out here, Mount Rhonda. Uh, over there is Mount Collie. And uh, we we're thinking about skiing it, but that knife edge ridge is pretty gnarly, pretty exposed. But it's uh, windy and pretty chilly up here, so I don't even know if you guys will be able to hear me, but uh, we're just heading down now quickly and get out of this wind. It's uh, The wind's got bite to it. It's uh, pretty strong, stronger than we thought it would be up here. So uh, yeah, we're just gonna head down and uh, get back uh, well down to the car I guess but we did pretty well for time I think it's around 1 1231 I got to check but yeah not bad so uh, anyway I gotta ski down this so check in with you guys later still got the skins on here we're uh, just getting past most of the rocks here so we don't ski down through the rocks. And then we'll transition and ski the rest. Yeah, it's cold and windy up here, so it's too pleasant. Right on. Alright, uh, find the ski, uh, what we hoped would be <laughs> corn snow, but uh, it's not the case. Hopefully we'll be able to uh, get over to, uh, this is the onion, the other side of the onion. That's what we want to get to. Okay, so those conditions uh, were actually 
pretty crappy uh, out on the glacier there skiing down. Uh, my specialty tools, uh, the K2 Wayback 88s, they were uh, not perfect for the situation. Um, maybe I just need to learn how to ski them in wind slap. But uh, my usual go-to Atomics, they are pretty versatile. They're heavy skis, but um, they've got more float, more tip to them, so it's easier to stay up on, to, on that wind slab. Um, versus these ones, trying to turn. I was just breaking through that wind crest, and it was very hard to turn. Um, but otherwise, uh, it was a good trip. Mount Ronda, super easy uh, ski ascent, super easy descent for the most part, some glacier travel. But uh, yeah, it was well fun trip. Uh, we got eyes on Mount Collie, which is kind of what we were hoping to do. And hopefully we'll be able to get there. Uh, looking at the knife edge to the summit, looks pretty hairy from far. Uh, so we're gonna have to zoom in on those photos, take a closer look at him and see what we can do about it. Um, it'll be a tricky ascent. I think we'll probably go up there camp at the base and then go summit uh, but we got to wait for perfect conditions uh, we'll need good visibility and stability for that one so uh, hopefully we'll get that one done so uh, yeah overall good trip easy uh, not so easy to ski with these skis but I probably just have to learn how to ski skinny skis in uh, wind slabby conditions uh, yeah the other skis I've got here are the uh, line sick days they're just quiver killered, so I switch out the kingpins onto those whenever I want to ski these. 186, they're pretty long. They're kind of point and shoot, whereas uh, the Atomics are very turny, super easy to ski. Um, that allows me just to have fun skiing and not have to worry about uh, my sloppy technique or anything. So yeah, Atomic Backlands, these 109s. I got the older ones on purpose um, just because they are a little bit heavier a little bit uh, stiffer. I think the flex pattern is probably a little bit better than the newer ones, but haven't actually tried that out. So yeah, fun skis. These are uh, more point and shoot too. They've got a longer turn radius. Um, these are the 180, 181 way back. So not super long or anything. Um, yeah, they're, they're fairly like on hard snow or on soft snow. They're a ton of fun to ski. Um, you can really rip on them and same with these line skis. They're kind of more of a floaty point and shoot. They're 104 width and 186. So you can really pick up speed on those and make nice wide turns. These are uh, more pivoty. Like I said, easy to turn, but usually my go-to ski, uh, just because they're so easy to ski, but I really love like fast wide turns like these skis that these skis give me, but, uh, yeah. Well, uh, once again, thanks for watching this episode, and until next time, ride on.